Hey guys, as you'll probably be able to tell by the sound of my voice, I am sick, so I look worse than I sound, which is pretty bad. So I'm not gonna do a face intro in this. I'm just gonna do one of my annoying, awkward intros I used to do in my older videos, but I hope you like the squishy makeover I'm doing. The first squishy I'm making over is this ice cream cone. I got this at the dollar store quite a while back, and as you can see, somebody ripped the top piece of it off, and I was curious to know what it was, so I sought out one that was undamaged. But honestly, after solving that mystery, this just raised more questions. I thought it might be more scoops of ice cream or a cherry on top, but I have no idea what this is supposed to be. I did know what I wanted to turn it into, though, so I wouldn't be needing the damaged one for this. I decided in my last squishy makeover that even though I didn't feel the need to, I was still going to start sanding my squishies before painting on them, but I completely forgot to do that, so I just started off adding the white base coat. All of the squishies I've made over so far have become kind of stiff and crusty, and I think the issue is that I'm using too much paint, so I'm also trying to reduce the amount of coats of paint that I use. I will still be using the blow dryer just to save time, and I was worried that that might be what was causing the paint to become stiff, but I later found out it was definitely just using too many coats of paint, so everything's fine with the blow dryer. When I had enough white paint on the squishy, I took out my paint palette to start mixing up some actual colors. And I am so proud of myself, I hope you guys are too, but get ready for this. I cleaned my paint palette. I knew right off the bat I wanted this to be a mint flavored ice cream, so I took some green and white and mixed them together until I got that perfect mint color. When it was ready, I started applying it to the ice cream, and I honestly love the step of adding the first coat of colored paint. It just gives you hope that maybe the end result is actually going to look better than just a random squishy with a crappy white paint job on it. I don't remember exactly how many coats of green paint it took to finally make it opaque. I think maybe two or three. It wasn't anything too crazy, and I was very sure not to layer it on too thick because, again, I don't want these getting all stiff and crusty. Sometimes I'm very stingy with paint and try to spread it out as much as I can because I'm worried that if it's a mixed color, I won't be able to recreate it perfectly, and then that'll just be recipe for disaster. I am trying to get over that fear because I know if I want it to look good, I will have to take risks. In the beginning, I was really intimidated by the thought of doing squishy makeovers. I honestly thought that was only for pros. But I think I've come a long way just from my first video. I'm already making observations and learning ways to improve things. It's just a learning process mostly, and it's so much fun, and I like this more than I ever thought I would have. So if any of you are considering doing something but you're intimidated by how difficult it might be, don't let that hold you back. And that's my cheesy inspirational message. Anyway, when I was finally done adding the green coat of paint, I moved on to the weird blob thing on top. I still have no idea what it is, so if you do, please let me know, because this mystery is killing me. Anyway, I tried to give it a nice thick coat of white paint so it was nothing but white. You can probably guess what I'm going to turn this into by now, but if not, I won't say it just for the scary surprise that's in store. It's probably super obvious, though. After that, it was time to move on to the cone. I only had this puny little container of black puffy paint, and for some reason I was really scared it would not be enough. So I started off just adding a teeny tiny squirt of it, and that ended up being plenty. I was so grateful that this paint was extremely opaque. When the cone was covered, I went around and tried to cover up any black specks that I got on the ice cream portion of the squishy. After that, I just did some touching up on the cone with any streaky areas that were still showing the original color. Next, I took out my clean paint palette, and I mixed together this very pale blue, and I painted it onto the strange blob that's on top of the ice cream. In case it wasn't obvious before, I am turning this into an eyeball, so the blue is going to be the iris. This part was kind of tricky. It was hard to get a flat, smooth, even coat of paint, but eventually I did get there, and then I took some darker blue, and I painted that around the iris to be that darker outline. As you can see, I did switch to my dotting tool for the finer details. I have various size tipped ones, too, so that makes things a little easier until I get gross little fuzzies on them. I started painting on the pupil and I could not get it round for the life of me so I just did the best I could with that. Next I took some red paint and using my dotting tool I added on the veins to the back of the eyeball. I definitely should have made them longer and more towards the front of the eye but realism wasn't really my goal here so it's okay. What's not okay is what I'm doing here. I'm making all of the veins join together on the back of the eye where the eye socket would be, and this just looks awful and I really wish I didn't do it. 
I did start to notice some cracking and separation at the seams, so I just sealed off the bottom of the eyeball with some red puffy paint. This was part of the design all along, it's just convenient that it also seals off any damage done, but I'm just adding some dripping blood now directly from the tube of paint. I guess it could look like cherry or strawberry syrup dripping down on top of the ice cream. I'm gonna go with strawberry because cherry is gross. I didn't want the dripping to look too uniform, but I'm worried I kind of did make it look that way, but again, realism wasn't necessarily the goal here, so I thought it looked alright. Just to try and make it look a little better though, I did take some more puffy paint and went around the edges so they weren't so clean. Now I'm mixing some black and brown paint to get a nice chocolate chip color. I'm adding little dots of that all around the ice cream to look like chocolate chip, so it's mint chocolate chip ice cream. For a spoopy twist, I then went around to every chocolate chip and I gave them all legs to make them look like spiders. This step was very tedious and a lot of the legs did not come out looking that great, but at least you can see what I was going for. Lastly, I took some purple paint and I painted that around the top of the cone to look like a band around a witch's hat. It was very hard to keep it straight in the same width all the way around, but I tried. Since I didn't have any gray or silver puffy paint, I just mixed together some black and white to get a gray color. Once I had it mixed to a shade that I liked, I used it to paint on the buckle of the witch's hat. So, as you can see, I turned the cone into an upside-down witch's hat. Finally, we have the before and after. It's not a super fancy or complicated design, there aren't a whole lot of details, but I do think it's a pretty cool idea and it's perfect for Halloween. Next up is my little mummy friend. I thought this squishy was so cute, so I actually bought two, so that way I could keep one in its original form and make the other over. I started off by removing the tag, <coughs> took out my once again disgusting paint palette, and gave him a coat of brown paint. Ah, oh, crap. I forgot the sanding again. Why am I so bad at life? Moving on, since it's too late now, as I said, I'm just giving him a brown coat of paint, and drying him off with a blow dryer. After that, I gave him another coat of brown paint, and then I turned him over to paint the back. And I gotta say, I'm a little disappointed they didn't give him a little butt. Talk about missed opportunities. Once the base coats were done and dried, I then mixed up a much lighter brown color. I painted the entire squishy in two coats of that color, and then added on the details. I wanted to turn this mummy into a voodoo doll, so the first thing I did was give him two button eyes. I really wanted to make sure they were asymmetrical. Next, I added some random stitching throughout his body. I wasn't really sure how to go about the placement of the stitching. I suppose I could have just gone along the actual seams of the squishy itself, but I thought that would have been a little much, and I was going for a more cute voodoo doll, and I think too many stitches might take away from the cute factor. So I just chose random spots here and there to add on stitching, plus I gave him stitches for eyebrows because I thought that would be cute. I'm also painting a little heart on him because when you Google search images of voodoo dolls, all the cute ones seem to have hearts and I thought that would be a nice pop of color for him. After that, I painted his feet and then I took the opportunity the original manufacturers didn't and I gave him a butt. I'm an adult. I have to say I'm pretty impressed with how this turned out. I know it's really simple and it's lacking color, but I still think it's a pretty neat idea and I think he's pretty cute. I've decided to name him Victor the Voodoo Doll and I'm very happy to say he is now my second original character on this channel. That's gonna do it for this video. Sorry I only made two again. I'm pretty limited on time and supplies, but I hope you still enjoyed. Let me know which one you liked best and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already as well as like and comment on the video. I'll see you next time. Bye!